friends, welcome to jwreasoning.com. Today is Friday, December 15th, 2023. I'm making this informal video just to give you a little update. Most of you probably already know this if you have the jw.org app. But the governing body has now approved beards for any brother that wants to wear it. It doesn't matter if you're a elder or a ministerial servant or a I guess a circuit overseer or whoever wants to wear one. And you know, it's it's very interesting and amazing to me how these guys just keep changing things, they keep moving things around. You know, Jesus obviously would not have been qualified to be an elder or a servant in most congregations here in the United States or to even give a public talk or uh, be on the ministry school for that matter. But now suddenly our Lord Jesus qualifies in the organization to be able to serve as an elder, to be able to serve as a ministerial servant, to be able to give a talk from a platform here in the United States. Isn't that amazing how Jesus finally qualifies in the year of 2023 that he can give a talk now? You know, I'm, I'm being a little sarcastic because really it's ridiculous these arbitrary rules that the organization has made these rules that they make for no reason because they want to it started with the Rutherford regime and it's gone on for over a hundred years the organization has really frowned on beards and I remember when I was a kid I remember seeing some of the Watchtower articles where Jesus didn't have a beard it's talked about on the JW broadcast Stephen Lett does this whole uh, this whole production about beards and even you know I'm glad that they're doing it the way they're doing it though they're making it to where they're trying to make it let's put it this way to where personal opinions won't get in the way in other words if a brother chooses to do it he should be able to do it isn't that the way it should be anyway isn't that the way it should be in the fellowship that I'm a part of I choose not to wear a beard my wife personally I think it might be a witness thing she doesn't like a beard on me uh, not that I've ever had one but she prefers that I not have facial hair on the bottom, on my chin or on, on the bottom of my face. But, um, you know, in the fellowship that I'm in, uh, the, the men can have beards or not. It's up to them. It's up to how long they grow it. It's up, it's up to them. It's, it has nothing to do with what any individual thinks. The organization is going to try to make this work. And, and I'm glad that they're finally making this change. But I think it's so ridiculous that for all of these years, brothers have been held back. Brothers that are very qualified have been held back because of facial hair? Really? I mean, is this really what... Uh, it's just so ridiculous. I, 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 I'm not without words very often, but... I just I'm amazed that they've made this change I guess they've kind of had to you know I've given this some thought uh, since I saw the video this morning and my thoughts were that you know with the uh, pandemic that happened a lot of people grew beards a lot of the brothers grew beards then and I think that they're they got so much pushback that they finally just said you know that's it we're just, let's just get rid of it let's just stop this and uh, really it's the right thing to do it's the right thing to do but to make these rules and make people abide by them. And now we have this new light or brighter light that it's okay for you to decide whether or not you have a beard. A good friend of mine told me years ago, he says the organization has a way of taking things that are B issues and turning them into A issues. In other words, taking things that are really aren't that important and making them into things that are of utmost importance. And what it uh, does is it allows them to be in control. I just wanted to make this video just to bring you up to speed, just to kind of, I guess, vent a little bit. And I, I want to apologize to you, brothers and sisters, if, if I seem a little sarcastic in this. It's, <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. Nothing should surprise me. But I was just, a dear sister sent me a text this morning, and uh, I, I really appreciate her very much. She's, a, she's a, just a lovely person and just a great personality, and she's a, she's a godly woman. She has uh, faded from the organization along with her children, 
and uh, she's a she's a a widowed uh, mom and you know I just uh, I, I'm grateful to her for sending me the text this morning and alerting me to this because I usually don't pay attention to JW.org that much but friends remember Jesus was is the way the truth and the life there's no other way to the Father except through him please remember that and you know our Lord Jesus I'm so glad that he finally qualifies to serve in a, uh, a higher capacity in the witness organization. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic again. Uh, but friends, just keep studying your Bibles. I hope you keep reading. I hope you uh, keep reading these things with a critical eye just to see the things and how this organization is designed by men. It is not God's organization. Jesus is the way, the truth, the light, and the life. And I just pray that you will continue to study and that Jehovah will continue to bless you until we meet again. Thank you.